Hi team, uh, my name is Colleen Lewis. I'm faculty at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. I'm excited to tell you about my paper, Physical Java Memory Models, a Notional Machine. Uh, so you can see here an example of the physical Java memory models that I've created. This is my stack frame for a, a potential main method that I've created. Um, a notional machine, that's a pedagogical tool to teach some aspect of programming. My notional machine involves this physical manifestation, and it's based upon work in math education. Like most people learn the abstract idea of numbers or addition using physical blocks. They use physical blocks and pictures of blocks and then the abstract symbols. And in my Java teaching, I had been using the abstract symbols, that's the code, and I had been using pictures of memory but and sort of hand drawings of that, but I hadn't had this physical piece. And I've been really excited as I've developed this physical piece that I get more and better questions. So I want to talk you through the five best benefits that I see of these physical models. Okay, the first one is that I use arrays to motivate the references and even the idea of references. So you can see here that I've got an int variable that holds 44 and then I have an array y that references essentially three int array, int variables in a row. Uh, and I use that to argue like, oh, I'm going to keep a reference rather than like jamming that array inside that y variable. Okay, so I use arrays to motivate this idea of having references in the first place. And because I can convince my students arrays can be really big, then they seem to not question it. It's like, okay, yeah, this is an extra hoop of this reference idea rather than just storing the value directly. We store a reference to the array. Okay. The next benefit is helping me talk students through make a copy of. So when I have something where I set a vari an int variable to another int variable, I say I make a copy of what's in that variable and, I'm, and I put it in that newly, the new variable that I'm assigning it to. And I get to do the exact same thing when I'm talking about references. So if I assigned friend to reference the same thing Fido does, then I take a copy of the value of the variable Fido, a copy of that reference, and I put it in friend, okay? And so it provides symmetry between how I uh, assignment statements work with primitives and assignment st statements work with references. Okay, my third piece is I've got these little physical objects that I use. So I've got a little purple dog here as my dog object that I've created. And by using a physical dog object, it allows me to not talk about constructors at first and not talk about the variable this at first. Um, it allows me to sort of gloss over that so I can handle some of the big and confusing pieces. Um, and, and in particular, some of the big and confusing pieces are having two variables that reference the same object. That's really hard. And um, so doing that without thinking about constructors and without thinking about instance variables, I think is really helpful. Okay, number four, null is really complicated. Anything that's sort of nothing, I think is hard for us to reason about. And so my diagram makes null a con like a concrete thing. This is what null is. When a variable there it was z, when my variable z is null, that means I have a pocket that could hold a reference and it does not hold a reference, okay? Uh, that, and so I even, I introduce null and then later on in the semester, I keep one of these with me at all times because if a null pointer exception uh, comes up, my students seem to find it helpful if I'm like, oh, but remember this variable was null. We often draw it as an X, so I've got an X in the back of these that gets blocked when you put the little remote control in. Okay, number five, this is the most important thing is that when I'm teaching using these physical memory models, I get more and better questions. It helps me th see things that students are confused about that I didn't know to anticipate students being confused about. In particular, I find that students ask a lot of questions where two variables reference the same object. Often multiple times in the same class, students will raise their hand with a puzzled look, being like, but Colleen, doesn't that mean that Fido and friend could both modify the object? And I'm like, yes, yes it does. So I think these physical models uh, are an opportunity to help students 
really understand the nuts and bolts of what's happening in Java memory models. The paper and associated videos walk you through 10 examples that show the instructional sequence that I use. It also maps that to ex the exact details of my notional machine that I use and the learning goal that I have for each. I hope you enjoyed the videos uh, and they've also got instructions about how to make your own set of these physical models. Thank you.